Welcome to another episode of Impact Today. We're so excited that you have decided to tune in today. We're Mark and Victoria Bowling. We're evangelists and teachers of the Word of God. Today, we're going to be talking about the power in the name of Jesus, the authority in the name of Jesus. Now, we've been on this already for a couple of episodes. Mm -hmm. I want to remind you to go ahead and grab your Bible and a notebook and a pen, take some notes. That way you can look back on it later and really give the Word of God a chance to get into your heart. Also want to remind you to visit our website. It's at impacttoday.tv. There you can shoot us an email or a prayer request or send us a testimony. You can also access every episode that we've ever made of Impact Today. So please go to our website and check it out. Um, we've been talking about the authority in the name of Jesus. Now, this is a really important subject because if we can get some revelation, get a grasp on the authority in the name of Jesus, it's going to take our faith up to a higher level. And that's something we all need. We all need our faith to go to a higher level. So do you want to review a little bit? Yeah. Uh, the authority of the name of Jesus you know, when she says take our faith to another level, you realize that means the difference between life and death for some people. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that means miracle or no mi miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, that means someone being healed, someone not being healed. That means demonstrating the power of God, not demonstrating the power of God. So this is real stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And so it's so important that we feed on this stuff that we realize everything that has happened for you and me through this plan of redemption that was God the Father's plan, His idea, not ours, His idea. And He executed it through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, the, the authority of the name of Jesus, the reason why there's so much power and authority behind that name is because of what it really represents. Mm -hmm. You know, all of deity is behind that name. Because Jesus is the very express image of the Father God. He is the brightness of the glory of God. He is the Son of God. He is God made flesh manifest amongst us. He is deity. The Bible's clear in John chapter 1 and Hebrews chapter 1 and many other places, Colossians chapter 1, that it was through Jesus everything was created. Everything was created by Him and for Him, and everything is held together by the power of His Word. He is God, manifest to us in the flesh. Amen. And so when it's, He says, I give you my name, boy, there's a lot of weight to that. Mm -hmm. um, the name of Jesus also represents everything that he has accomplished for us. Now remember, his name, the name that Jesus obtained for you and I, was obtained three different ways. He obtained it by inheritance. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4 says that he obtained a more excellent name than the angels. Philippians chapter 2 says it, his name was given to him. It was bestowed upon him. It says that he, God, has highly exalted Christ and given him the name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of beings in heaven, beings on earth, beings under the earth, and that at the name of Jesus every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord Amen. to the glory of God the Father. So it was bestowed upon him. And also he obtained his name by conquest. Colossians 2 says that he disarmed or spoiled, stripped naked principalities and powers, the devil 
and his entire kingdom of darkness has been stripped naked. And you say, well, I see the devil working in people's lives. Yeah, but that's because they're, they're still part of the world. Mm -hmm. And when you accept Jesus Christ, you're in this world, but you're no longer of this world. Right. You're part of a different kingdom. Right. The Bible says that we're delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. But the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one. He's the God of this world. Yeah. And so when people aren't born again, their father is the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think we're all God's children, but that's not actually the case, right? right. We're all God's creation, but it's when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we call upon him and give our lives to him that we are taken from that kingdom of darkness. Mm. We are planted in the kingdom of God and we become children of God. Hallelujah. It's at that point that the devil no longer has rule and dominion over us, right? But now, it still has will, to be enforced. It has to be enforced. Mm -hmm. He will take advantage of ignorance. Right. In fact, the Bible says in Hosea chapter four, verse six, God said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So the devil really only has the power that you give him, that you permit him to have. He's been stripped of all power and all authority over your life. The only weapon he has against you is deception. So if you're ignorant of the promises, if you're ignorant of everything that God has done for us through Christ Jesus, then the devil can still have um, authority, not authority, he, he can still operate in our lives because of our ignorance. Right. However, that's why we're teaching this. We're getting educated. Mm -hmm. Our minds are being renewed. Your mind is being renewed in the truth of God's word so that you can walk in the blessings of God. You know, Ephesians chapter one, here's an astounding scripture. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, past tense, it's something already done. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places Amen. in Christ Jesus. God has already given you everything you need for this life and for godliness through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's astonishing. You have to find out what's yours in the Word. You have to find out. You have to learn. You have to educate yourself. You have to find out what's in the last will and covenant, what God has purchased for you through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And one of those things is authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. As we stated in the past, the term in Christ is used in the New Testament 100, about 130 times. Mm -hmm. And it speaks of our legal standing and position in Christ Jesus, that we're in union with Christ. The phrase in the name, of, in the name of Jesus, that is, speaks of our right to represent him, our right to represent Jesus, to act on his behalf in his place. Amen. To represent him with his authority. You think about that. Think of the privilege. Think of the honor. And the responsibility. And the responsibility. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so what are the different uses of the name? Well, Jesus? first of all, salvation. Yeah. If we want to be saved, we have to call on the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Then there's gathering in the name of Jesus. Right. Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered together in my name. There Jesus. I am. There I am. In, in the, the midst, midst of them. We do everything in the name of Jesus. Yes. Every task, every um, word we speak how we treat people yeah we do it in his name that's colossians 3 17. yes then ephesians 5 20 says that we're to give thanks for all things or all people mm -hmm. in, in the name, name of our lord jesus christ 
And then there's the sacrifice of praise, giving thanks to his name. name. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Then we saw in Luke chapter 24, we're to preach in the name of yeah. Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus has commissioned us. When I say us, I'm talking about not just Victoria and I, us. Mm -hmm. If you're in the church, if you're a member of the body of Christ, he has commissioned us to go in his name. Amen. Testifying of his death, his burial, his resurrection on our behalf. And that there's, repent, there's remission of sins for all who repent. There's remission of sins for all who turn from their past and turn to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we become brand new creatures in Christ Jesus when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Then we read in John chapter 15 and 16 that we are to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And I want to read those. I, uh, John, okay. John 15, mm -hmm. verse 16. It says, you, Jesus, he's talking. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, cha chapter 16, verse 23, it says, and in that day, you'll ask me nothing. Now, that's the part I want you to hear. In that day, the day we're living in right now, this age of grace, ever since Jesus died and rose again, we're living in that day. It's the acceptable year of the Lord. Now is the acceptable time. God is saying, I accept you. God is saying, you can come to me now. The price has been paid. Your sins have been paid for. All you have to do is turn from them and say yes to Jesus Christ. That's the day we're living in. And Jesus said, in that day, you'll ask me nothing. nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Now, the reason why I wanted to point this out again mm -hmm. Is because here it talks about praying to the Father in the name of Jesus. That means you approach the Father not on your merit, not on your good deeds, not on your goodness, but on what Jesus has done, on his merit, on who he, uh, based on the fact of who he is and really what he wants done in this earth. Amen. The will of God to be done here on this earth. Remember, the phrase in the name means in the place of. Right. The right to act on behalf of. So in prayer, we're here on earth. Jesus is no longer here on earth. And so we're praying on his behalf to the Father in his name. It's good stuff. Glory. But that brings us to the thing where we left off last week. And that is doing the works in the name of Jesus. John 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. So notice there, it, it leaves the impression, and even some translations leave the impression, that Jesus is saying, even though he said in John 16, in that day you'll ask me nothing, this leaves the impression, in that day you're going to ask me. Right. But the word ask there could actually be translated require or demand. We don't require of the Father. We don't demand of the Father. But we do demand demons to leave people. Right. See? And we do demand paralysis to leave people. And he's talking about doing the works. 
And so, really, we left off last episode uh, quoting that as well as Acts chapter 3. Let me show you what we believe Jesus is referring to in John 14, where he says, Whatever you ask or whatever you require, demand in my name, I will do it. Notice what it says here. Peter and John in Acts 3, they find a, a man. He's crippled from birth. And uh, he's begging alms. They're walking by. He's asking for money. And Peter stops. He fixes his eyes on him. And he says, silver and gold I do not have. Or in other words, I don't have any money. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Notice he wasn't praying, was he? No. Nope. He didn't ask the Father for anything there. No, he just commanded. He just demanded. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He gave a command to this situation, a man who's crippled. He says, in the name of Jesus, get up, walk. And he picks him by, he takes him by the right hand. And, he, and when he does that, the power of the Holy Spirit surged into that crippled man's body and that crippling condition left hallelujah and he was immediately healed this kind of reminds me of when jesus was in the boat and mm -hmm. there was a storm and he said peace be still yeah same kind of thing That's he right. just commanded but then we just read we're to do, do the same works yeah so Exactly. It's the same kind of thing. Same thing. Mm -hmm. I remember you reminded me, um, we were doing a village outreach uh, in a particular nation, and I had some students with me. And there was these dark storm clouds coming. Mm -hmm. And as I'm starting to preach, it, start, it was starting to rain. Not heavy yet. It wasn't a deluge, but the clouds showed us there was a deluge of rain coming. And I noticed as I was beginning to speak and the rain is starting to come that the students in the back, they were pointing to the clouds and I saw them commanding <laughs> that rain to stop in Jesus' name. And did you know that rain stopped? It stopped completely. I preached. I took my time. Then we, we, we prayed with the people. We ministered to the sick for quite a while. We packed everything up, all the equipment was packed up, and when we were all finished, the rain came. Yeah, we've seen that on several occasions. Several occasions. There's power and authority yes. in the name of Jesus. And that brings, you say, well, man, that's, that's Peter, though, in Acts 3, Brother Mark. That's Peter. He was an apostle. But notice what Mark 16 says. Mark 16, verse 15 through 18. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. What? And these signs will follow those who believe. They will follow the apostle? No, they will follow those who believe. The believer. The believer. In my name, they will cast out demons. Mm -hmm. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Glory to God. Amen. Listen to these, these miraculous signs that are to accompany you as you continue the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, everything Jesus did in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, are to be continued through His church. Amen. The believer. Amen. You. In His name, you're to go and proclaim the good news. In His name, you are to cast out demons. You have authority over demons. You have dominion over uh, demons. There's protection for you in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. over um, uh, snake bites, 
uh, poisonous food. Now, when he says that, he doesn't mean go eat poisonous food on purpose. To see if you can survive it, yeah. right? If, see if he's going to save you. Right. Don't, don't, don't go get bitten by a snake on purpose. He's just saying if you're out and about taking the gospel to people and something happens and you partake of something by accident, you get bit by accident, someone puts poison in your food, right? Because they hate you, right? The Bible says if you're ministering in the name, there's protection. That's awesome. Then there is, notice it says, uh, they, they, who? The believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'll never forget this. I'll never forget this. I was preaching a miracle festival in Asia. And I alluded to this passage of scripture. I had the people look at their hands. Mm -hmm. I said, look, God wants to use your hands. The healer has come to live inside of you because they had all just accepted Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And when he comes in, he's there through his spirit. Your spirit and his spirit become one. And I said, now you can now lay hands on the sick and they shall recover if you lay hands on them in his name. If they'll receive it, obviously if someone's rejecting your ministry, then, then that's different. But if they're open and they'll receive, you can lay hands on them in the name of Jesus. And the life of Jesus, the miracle life of Jesus, the power of God, the presence of God will flow out of you into them, whether you feel anything or not in faith. Well, there was a lady there. She heard me say that. She went home to her husband, who was in bed, mm -hmm. paralyzed on one side of his body. She laid hands on, now, no, no, she wasn't a preacher, not an evangelist. As far as we knew, a brand new believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And with simple faith, she heard that message. She acted on it and went home believing it. And she laid hands on her husband. Hmm. In the name of Jesus, who was paralyzed on one side, one full side of his body. And within two or three days, he got out of bed, healed by the power of God. Amen. An evangelist didn't lay hands on him. A pastor didn't lay hands on him. A young believer laid hands on him in the name of Jesus. The power is in the name yes. of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. What power? He is the master of the universe. He said in Matthew 28, all authority, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now you go in my name and take this gospel. Amen. Amen. Do you want to read another verse? <laughs> what verse would that be? <laughs> James 5? Yeah, James 5. James 5, verse 14. If any is anyone among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. So we see anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Wow. Amen. For healing. For healing. And forgiveness. And forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. So here, now I think it's very important to note here. If you look at the context, he's not encouraging church members here to call the, their pastor for every little ailment. No. Look, this guy is in bed. He's bedridden. He's bedridden. Because it says, and the Lord will raise him up. That means he's on his back. Yeah. So you don't call the pastor for prayer every time you have a headache. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that Actually, what we're teaching should put something in you where you can learn to have your prayers answered on your own. Right. Without always calling somebody else. Actually, you can get to the place where people are calling you mm. if you walk in hum humility before the Lord. And, and so, but notice here, it says, if someone among you is sick, serious condition, let them call for the elders of the church and let them anoint him with oil. In the name of the Lord. Now, oil always represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. So they come 
And as a sign of the manifest, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, they anoint with oil in the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. Mm -hmm. Not the prayer of, well, Lord, if it's your will, come do it. Right. No, 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 no. The prayer of faith. Faith means firm persuasion, firm conviction. In other words, you're persuaded. I'm praying. God's hearing us. God is answering our prayer right now. Amen. It is done in Jesus' name. The Bible says that prayer of faith, that kind of prayer, the prayer of faith, you believe you have it before you experience it. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and we have a promise. The Lord shall raise him up. Amen. And if he has committed any sins, they nope. will be forgiven. Amen. Why? Amen. It was paid for by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, he bore all of our guilt and shame. He died for our sins. And then he rose again because of our justification. Amen. Well, when he died for our sins, he also suffered our sicknesses and diseases. And that's why in his name, we can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Or we can anoint with oil and pray the prayer of faith and the Lord will raise them up. It's been paid for by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do you need salvation today? Today you can receive. Today. His name has power to save you. He's present at the very mention of his name. When you say Jesus, he's right there at that moment. And he will set you free. So let's pray right now. Thank you, Lord. If you've never done this, pray it right now with all of your heart. Say, dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I acknowledge I'm a but sinner. I believe. But I believe. Jesus is your son. Jesus is your son. And I believe. And I believe. He died for my sins. He died for my he sins. He was raised for my justification. He was raised for my justification. And therefore. And therefore. He is Lord. He is Lord. I confess He is Lord. I confess He is Lord. My Lord. My Lord. My Savior. My Savior. Jesus. Jesus. Save me now. Save me now. According to your promise. According to your promise. I thank you you do it. I thank you you do it. I believe. I believe. I am saved. I am saved. Now dear Jesus. Now dear Jesus. I call on your name. I call on your name. To heal me. To heal me. Right now. Right now. I call on that great name. I call on that great name. Because I believe. Because because I when believe you died, when you died, you took my place. You took my place. You took my sickness. You took my you sickness. You took my disease. You took my disease. And by your stripes. And by your stripes. I am healed. I am healed. Father God. Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I take you at your word. I take you at your word. And I believe. And I believe. I receive. I receive. My healing. My healing. Now. Now. I'm healed. I'm healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, my friend. If you prayed that prayer. You're forgiven. Yes. And now the Lord's healing you as well. Mm -hmm. We want to hear from you. Call the number on your screen. Send us an email. Go to our website, impacttoday.tv. Tell us what's going on. Give us your prayer request. We love you and we thank you for watching us. And just keep feeding your faith, starving your doubts to death. We'll see you next week.